35, who the fuck did I marry? So I packed up all his stuff. Okay. The reason why I packed up all his stuff is because, so I had a three bedroom, two and a half bath town home. One room was the guest room. Obviously there was a master bedroom. And then we had a TV room that he had made like his Philadelphia Eagles man cave. I was going to put everything that belonged to him, pack it up and put it in the TV room because the plan should have been that he's going to come back and get all his stuff. Okay. So that's why I did it. Um, and honestly, it just felt good <laughs> to pack up his stuff and, and go through it freely because when he packed in a hurry, he left obviously really important things. He left all his Invicta watches. He left all his WWE championship belts. And if you know anything about WWE championship belts, you know, those things are expensive. He left all his Jordans. He left, um, suits. He left, uh, Cole Han shoes. He left all that. Cause he, it was such a hurry for him to leave. So all that was still in my house. Um, so around two 30, I think I, I wasn't even at a place where I could start crying. I was just too angry, still shaking, packing everything up, packing everything up. One of the things that he left, um, is a photo album with all the pictures of his mom and dad and his siblings growing up. Now, I had the thought of I was going to have a burn party and I was going to put it on Facebook Live. I was going to burn it with my friends and drink and dance and play music. But um, it's his deceased parents. I do have a heart. So I put that somewhere special, meaning I put it up in the closet. Um, he t had told me that he was going to come back and get his stuff. And so I just did not, I, I didn't throw anything out unless it was like I, something I knew was trash. Other than that, I put everything up and kept it, you know, in the TV room. So that's June 17th. Also on June 17th, I had already ordered his birthday cake. I had ordered the birthday cake like the end of May because it was like a special birthday cake. So I also had to go get the birthday cake <laughs> from the bakery in East Point. Um, and I took it to my family's house and we ate it. Yes, I had left the house, um, went to my family's house, filled them in my aunt, my little cousin and my grandfather because my mom was in Arkansas. So I went over to their house, fill them in on what was going on. They could not believe it. Although my grandfather then told me, he said, he ain't look like he was a football player. He was like, I didn't want to say nothing, but he ain't look like he was a football player. <laughs> Gotta love grandparents. Um, so we ate his birthday cake, went back home. Um, the friend that I had called came, changed all the locks, changed, I changed the security codes. Um, effectively, he would not have been able to get in that house. So that is what happened on June 17th. So now we can fast forward. He he would text me and he would call me that he got to Philly. Apparently he drove through, he left Georgia and immediately went to Philly. So he immediately went to Philly um, and he did text me and said that he made it to Philly and he was staying at his aunt's house. I know that this is a short part. That's okay because what we're doing now is I went through how we met. I went through how we dated. I went through how we got married. Um, now I'm taking you all to June 17th. The week after June 17th, he's in Philly. He still would call me. He still would um, text me. The conversations we were having the week after June 17th, so this would be June 18th up to the 24th. The conversations we are having had to do with divorce. So who's going to file? And he was like, well, I don't want a divorce. So I'm going to fight you on it. Are you? Really? Are you going to fight me on the divorce? Um, I didn't know anything about filing for a divorce. So, but I refused to stay in a place of ignorance. So I um, went online. There's a website that you can go to where you pay like a $200, $239 fee. And you fill out basic information and you choose your state you choose your state and they will um, process, not process, but they will make all your documents. All you got to do is print it out and take it to the court. And it is step-by-step -step directions. We didn't have any property with each other. We didn't have any kids with each other. So by the state of Georgia's standards, this should be an uncontested divorce. So the conversation that last week, the week of June 18th to the 24th, 
was about divorce. What stuff do you want to keep? Well, I'm going to come and get all my stuff. I just don't understand why you couldn't talk to me about it. I said, there's no room for talking because you've been lying to me since day one. Um, but even still, keep in mind, as of June 17th, June 18th, June 19th, I did not know what I know now. So the lies were really only like 5% of the whole story. So June 24th or 25th is when I had printed my documents. <laughs> and I'm laughing because at this point in time, I've read y'all's comments about how that man will print out stuff. I know. But um, I used the website, typed all my stuff in, got my documents. And then I went, um, I took a day off from the job because I was getting ready to transition into the new job. So I left work early, went to the courthouse and filed for divorce. I filed, I paid. Um, and then I already had the documents where he would have needed to sign so that um, it could then be entered into for a divorce settlement agreement. So going into part 36 or 35, I know there's so many parts. Going into the next part is where I can tell you guys what happened with him because he drove to Philly and he was in Philly for about a week, maybe three to four days. <sighs> then I get a message on Facebook Messenger from a woman claiming to be his cousin. Lord Jesus. So the cousin tells me, actually I can tell y'all. So the cousin tells me that he's there. He's telling the family that I kicked him out. He's telling the family that I kicked him out after he walked in on me having an affair. That I stole his money and I then kicked him out, and the man I was having an affair with, he said, was a law enforcement officer who used his duty weapon to threaten him to get out the house. This is what he told his family. And the cousin was reaching out to me. She found, my, she found me through a search on Facebook and was reaching out to me because she's like, we know he lies. So I'm just trying to figure out what... Like, is this true? Because he's up here asking us for money, asking to stay on our couches. Like, what's what's going on? Then she explained to me, we didn't even know he got married. So this is the first time we're hearing about you. What do you mean you didn't know he got married? He talks to his brother every day. She said, who told you that? I said, I've heard him talk to his brother every day. All his brothers. She said, all his brothers. How many brothers do you think he has? I said, he has four brothers. I named them. She said, he has two brothers. She, got, she said, he has the twin and he has the older brother. I said, twin. Who is the twin? Welcome to the next part where we discover the real family tree. Part 36, who the fuck did I marry? The family tree. Please fasten your seatbelts and put the tray tables in the upright position. Let's go. All right, the cousin, I'm not going to name her. The cousin had reached out to me on Facebook, asked me to please give her a call. So this conversation was on the phone. Yes, I was actually speaking to her. She informs me again about the whole he's up there. He's telling everyone that he walked in on me cheating on him. It was with a law enforcement officer and that the law enforcement officer um, used his duty weapon to threaten him to get him out of the house. The reason why I'm, I'm particularly mentioning the fact that he said it was law enforcement is because he was trying to get a family member, like one of his cousins, to call the agency of the law enforcement officer and file a complaint, which in hopes would then start an internal affairs investigation. Yeah. So, female cousin's on the phone with me. She's telling me everything that he is telling them. She's like, look, we know he a liar. We don't fuck with him. We, he's been a liar since a kid. But he's also family. She said, we didn't know at all who you are. So, I thought that that was interesting because I was like, you didn't know who I was, but his brother knew who I was. And so, again, that's when I said to her that um, I was like, I've talk, you know, he's talked to his brother every day. So, I, why wouldn't the brother tell y'all that he had gotten married? And so she said, what brother? And so I told her the brother's name. And she said, he told you that? I said, he was having the phone calls in front of me. So at this point, what the cousin said was, she was like, okay, I'm going to confirm that with him. She was like, he lives up the street, so I'm going to just confirm that with him. She was like, because I'm pretty sure that they, that they have been beefing for a while. I was like, I can only tell you what I saw, what I heard, 
that's that's all I can say. So then when she asked me about, well, how many brothers do you think he has? And I said, he has four brothers. Again, I listed all of them. This woman was like, he has two brothers. She said he has the twin and she and he has the older brother, the one that he was on the phone with every morning, blah, 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 blah. I said, twin? Who's the twin? <sighs> so this is where she explained to me. She said, the parents, mom and dad, had the older brother. The um, older brother is uh, about five or six years older than Legion. Legion and the younger brother who lives in Nashville, they are twins. So when he kept saying the younger brother, my younger brother by two years, it's his older brother by 20 minutes. They are twins. I have seen a picture of this brother. Yes, they do very much look alike, but they, I didn't know they were twins. It doesn't even matter. I didn't know they were twins. Um, but definitely they had a mom, the same mom and dad. So she was like, no, that he's older, he's older than Legion by 20 minutes. They're twins. She said, so the parents had three boys, brother in Philly, the older brother and the twins. She was like, who the hell are these sisters that you're talking about? So I tell her, I was like, Shantae and Kim. She said, I don't know who Shantae is. She said, Kim is my daughter. Kim is not his sister. Kim is my daughter. And she said, that's his cousin. She was like, and they haven't spoken in about 20 years. So, no, that's not his sister. He does not have any sisters. And I said, well, then what about the other two brothers? She was like, what other two brothers? I said, the brothers from his dad. She was like, you mean to tell me <laughs> this man is going around telling people, I know somebody's going to quote Nicki Minaj lying on your dead mama, but try not to. Um, she said, you mean to tell me this man is walking around lying on his dad, saying that his dad had kids outside of his mom? And I kind of stuttered like, yeah. She was like, he does not. She said, I have no idea who those two men are. She said, those are not his brothers. But if y'all remember, I've met those two. And he introduced them as, you know, man, this is my, this is my brother uh, John. This is my brother Matt, you know, type thing. And so they both were like, oh, my sister is good to meet you. It's good to meet you. Remember that because obviously I do eventually talk to those two men again. So she says to me, the family tree is mom and dad, the three sons. She was like, there are no sisters. She said, I don't have a clue who Shantae is. She said, Kim is my daughter, so that's just their cousin. But again, they ain't spoken 20 years. I said, okay. And then there was the grandmother. She said, yeah. She named the grandmother. She was like, yeah, she died in like 2008. I said, yeah, he told me that she died in 2020. And that, you know, all of you were coming down for the memorial service. And she's just like, she died in 2008. I said, then there was the uncle who also died from COVID. She was like, which uncle is that? I told her the name. She said, he's been dead since like, shit, 2010? I said, okay, what about the cousin nicknamed Junebug? Everybody got a cousin. If, if you're not African-American, we all know a Junebug somewhere. Um, and she just was like, oh, yeah, you know, you know, cousin Junebug. She was like, man, that's, that's crazy what happened to him. And I was like, what, you, what, what do you mean what happened to him? Because I know he has talked to his cousin Junebug on the phone, like, few, you know, a few months prior. He was like, and so she said to me, she said, yeah, he had passed away in, like, 2016. So this is now three people that she's naming that I recall him having either a story about or a phone call with. And she's telling me that they are all passed away. So this is when the conversation kind of changes. And she's like, you know what? She said, let me speak to the older brother um, because he probably wants to talk to you. She was like, you probably should talk to him. And a lot of your answers, a lot of your questions will get answered. She was like, this dude's been lying ever since he was a kid. She was like, uh oh, she said, literally, we don't fuck with him. I remember her saying that verbatim. She was so adamant. She was like, and when he showed up here out the blue, talking about how his wife cheated on him with a law enforcement officer and how the guy took his gun out and threatened him to leave the house. She was like, we knew something was up. She was like, that's why I had to find out who you are and reach out to you and find out the truth. I said, there was no other guy. There was no law enforcement officer. And she was like, yeah, because he was telling us where the dude worked and how we should go ahead and file, like help him file a complaint so that this dude could lose his job. I said, there is no other person. I said, I kicked him out. That was me, all by myself. No gun, just my fist. Um, and so she said, you know, he tell, he telling us that he had gotten married. And then she was like, apparently y'all had a baby. So she was like, so you got a kid with him? So I had explained to her. I said, no. I said I had a miscarriage back in July, or excuse me, back in June of 2020. And I had to have surgery in July. So she was just like, girl. So she started like really being encouraging and was saying, you dodged a bullet, honey. She was like, I don't wish this. She's like, I know he my family, but I don't wish him on no woman. 
So we, we've had each other's number. She was like, if you need anything, please feel free to call me. She was like, I've had my own issues with him. I've had my own issues in life. But she was like, get your divorce and be done with him. Then she said, I'm going to put you in contact with the older brother. Next part is me finally talking to the older brother that he had been talking to every morning. Part 37, who the fuck did I marry? So at this point in time, I have filed for divorce. Um, I paid for the filing fee. I'm representing myself uh, pro se, and it should be an uncontested divorce. During this time, Legion had driven to Philly, lied to his family, and said I had cheated on him, um, that he caught me, and that the guy I cheated on him with was a law enforcement officer who used his gun to threaten him to get out of the house. None of that was true. At some point while he was in Philly, he ran out of options in terms of where he could stay. Family members did not want him to stay with them. Um, apparently, a lot of bridges were burned, according to the female cousin I had talked to on the phone. So he left Philly. Left Philly and went to Augusta. Yes, what you were hearing is correct. He drove from Georgia to Philly. Stayed in Philly for about three, four days. Left Philly, drove back to Georgia, went to Augusta. Keep in mind, if you have lost your notes at this point, he was raised in Philly and did high school in Augusta before he went to California. So he has family in Augusta. So at this point, he's on his way to Augusta to stay with a new set of people. The reason why this is important is because what I have is a divorce settlement agreement. That divorce settlement agreement has to be signed by the two of us where we are basically telling the court, look, this is what he's keeping, this is what I'm keeping. I need his signature. Let me repeat that. I need his signature because I wanted a very quick and painless divorce as much as it could be. So by this time, this is now around June 25th. So around June 25th, he's now in Augusta. He had left the house June 17th, so between June 17th and June 24th is the trip to Philly, then leaving Philly, coming to Augusta. Um, my aunt and my little cousin get in the car with me, <laughs> and I drive to Augusta with a, with a rag on my head, some sweatpants, and a tank top, because it's July, so it's hot. Um, but we ride to Augusta. I had spoken to him. I had said, you know, I just need you to sign this piece of paper, and he was like, you know, I'll, I'll get to it when I get to it. No, no, no. We're going to get to it as quickly as possible. So if that means I got to drive to Augusta tomorrow morning at 7 o'clock, I'm going to do that because I need that signature. I ain't telling this. This was my attitude. Sure enough, went ahead, drove down there. I met him at the UPS store in Augusta. It's in the same Kroger shopping center. They had a notary there because I needed the papers to be notarized. So he pulls up. It's only been a week since I last saw him. It has been months since my aunt saw him, okay? She had no idea of the condition that he was in. Again, I'm telling y'all, when I met him, when he met my family, he was like a size 3X. In just a short span of time for a week, he easily could have been in an extra large, maybe even a large, but was wearing 3X clothes. So he has told me this whole time, he didn't know I had spoken to his family. Okay, probably need to put that in there. He did not know I had spoken to his cousin. So he was telling me that he had a place to stay. He was staying with some family members um, and everything was cool. He told me he was going back to Augusta because he had a job. That's what he told me. The family member, the cousin told me, oh no, it's not that he had a job. We kicked his ass out because he's still lying. And we don't want, we don't want anything to do with him. So when I saw him get out the car, I immediately knew you probably have not washed in three days. I'm not overreacting. His nails had not been cut, so his nails were a bit long. He smelled like the Chattahoochee dump on a hot summer Georgia day. He stunk so bad. Um, and for a moment, I did not recognize the man I had been, that I was legally married to. I did not recognize him. Um, he almost looked, uh, what's the word? He ma emaciated. If I, I may be saying, I may be mispronouncing it, but the way someone looks when they've lost so much weight and it's almost like your skin and bones. He, he looked, he, obviously he looked homeless. He smelled homeless. Um, and 
my my heart just kind of broke. It kind of did. I'll be honest, it kind of broke. Um, it did not break enough for me to not get that signature, though. So when he walked into the UPS store, you clearly could see that some of the people were like, you know, let me let me get away from him. Me, I just was like, okay, so I just need you to sign right here, and I just need you to sign right there, okay? And then a woman named Lauren came over and notarized the papers, um, and then we were done because he signed the divorce agreement. He didn't even read it. He didn't even read it. Reason why I'm pointing that out is because he didn't read the part where what's left in the house now belongs to me. Where he took technically what he was going to take. Everything else in that home belongs to me. Remember I told y'all he had left all his Invicta watches. He had left all his WWE championship belts, his Jordans, his a lot of his clothes, his Cole Hans. He had left all that stuff. He never even read the divorce agreement. So he signed it. I signed it. Lauren notarized it. We leave the store, and I said, have you eaten? And he was like, yeah, um, I ate. It's just, you know, my knee. So, again, he's, he's talking about the knee, but if you saw him, you would know there's way more to it than the knee. So I said to him, look, since you met me here, let me give you some money so you can get you some chicken nuggets. Yeah, that's what I said. You can get you some chicken nuggets. So I believe I gave him like 5 or $6. Go get you some chicken. I think I zelled it to him, actually. Just go get you some, some food. Then we, because where he parked was not far. It was like, okay, I'm parked here. He's parked in front of me in the other row. So there's that aisle that you can drive down. Um, so I walked him to the car. And I saw the condition of the inside of the car. And that's when I knew he's been living in his car. He's been living in his car. So... Clearly, I no longer had a question of, so where's this offshore account? Where's the U.S. bank savings account? Where's, where's the checking account? Didn't have that question anymore. Because if you had money, you wouldn't be living in your car. You would not be in the same clothes that you were in when you left my house on June 17th. And this is now June 25th. So, he was like, I'm going to be all right. I'm about to start a new job. I'm going to be cool. I got a family member I can stay with. Um, everything's going to be okay. All right. Um, I said, I will let you know when the divorce is granted. I said, I will send you a copy of the divorce decree. And he was like, okay. He said, well, how long do you think that's going to take? I said, I'm not sure. I, I thought I had to wait 30 days before I could file the divorce agreement settlement form. And then the judge would grant it. Um, in 30 days. So basically, this is like June 25th. I'm looking at the end of August that it would take for the divorce to be granted, assuming there were no hiccups, assuming he didn't decide he was going to pull a fast one. So I told him, I was like, I'm, I'm going to file this. And then once we get the divorce decree, I'll send you a copy. He said, OK, he got in his car. I got in my car. I drove all the way back home and he went to wherever he went. Next part is the next series of lies that I was faced with. Boy, Jay, you do it.